Hi, welcome to another video. So, I've been seeing a lot of buzz about CoFounder, which is apparently a new AI coding agent. It seems to be open source and can generate full stack generative web apps with backend, database, as well as stateful web apps. It apparently has generative UI rooted in app architecture with an AI guided mock up designer and modular design systems. I actually saw it a while back, and it was not good at that time, but maybe it has improved or something. So, we'll try it out as well. From what I understand, it is like an AI coding agentic system, where you give it a prompt, then it goes through a bunch of agents and processes defined for each step, and then creates the stuff. Which sounds good, but it can be a token nightmare if done improperly. It is very difficult to implement an agentic system like what Klein has, but be cheaper. I think Klein is one of them that has implemented it quite well. Anyway, it apparently has a web UI along with a CLI tool as well. Currently, it can only generate React apps based on Vite, which could be fine for most, but obviously not what everyone would want. It also creates a database and everything which is also pretty cool to see. So, let's get it installed and see for ourselves how it works and if it's worth using or not. Let's get started. First of all, just run this npx command. It should get it installed and ask for your OpenAI API key and then the Anthropic API key. Now, here's one of the limitations. First of all, you'll need an OpenAI API key even if you use anthropic models, because it uses OpenAI's embedding models, which is not very ideal. Secondly, for the best results, it is recommended to use anthropic models, and there's no way to change its base URL easily without messing around in the code, which is also not ideal. But anyway, once you set that up, you'll need another API key, which you need to get from co-founder's site, which is free for now but it's not very ideal either. They say that they'll release that for local usage at some point, but trusting a text is not something I do. But anyway, I got the API key from there because it's free as of now. Once you do that, it will take a bit, and it should get started on localhost and some port. Just open it up, and you should see this interface. Now, nothing works here except the projects option. So, let's just select that. Now here, you'll need to create a new project in order to build an app. Once you build it, it will be available here as well. Anyway, let's just create a new app here. Now here, you'll need to enter the application name along with the description and aesthetics. Let's try building a finance tracker app with this and also provide the description and aesthetics here. Now, once you do that, it should start working. It shows you a flow chart of sorts, and this flow will get quite big. I'll play the whole process at like 10x speed because it took a long time and a lot of tokens.
So, this is the final thing it gave me. It made a lot of blocks and flows, which is pretty good. But it was a big token nightmare, as it consumed around three, four million tokens, which, depending on the provider you use, could cost more than ten dollars. And I can use a whole month of Klein for that. But maybe it generated something that is out of this world. So, let's have a look. Okay, so the live feature doesn't work either, and none of this other stuff works. But apparently, based on the README, we can go to the apps folder, and here we should find it and run it. So, if I run this, I just see this message. So, I checked for some errors, and found there were route errors, which I fixed, and now this is what it looks like. So, here comes the first issue with this generation. In my prompt, I asked it to make a simple one-page app, which it didn't do, and it includes sign-in and login pages. Ignoring that, the landing, sign-in, and sign-up pages look fine, but nothing extraordinary, and for some reason, the sign-in and sign-up pages don't work. So, I just removed the inner pages from the authentication, and now I can at least access them. This is what it looks like. Nothing extraordinary either, and the stuff here doesn't work either. The finance tracker works, but the dashboard and other features don't show the correct numbers. Now, you may be wondering that if it doesn't work, why don't I just ask it to fix it? Well, that's because there's no way from what I see to make changes. You'll need to stick with what it creates. Now, the amount of tokens it consumes and what it produces is really disappointing. I don't think it has any worth, at least for me. I mean, it looks cool, but looking cool isn't everything. It's worse than Ditto. Ditto can create some great stuff quite easily in like one page of code. And this, being so big, can't even create a simple one-page app. It just consumes a lot of tokens and isn't worth anything, at least for me. It might be good for some who can make it work, but at least for me, it seems very immature for use. You can just use Klein or Ader and get some cool stuff built. It's good to see such developments, but sometimes I really don't get why people are building things that are literally unusable. I mean, can't the developers test it and see it for themselves? I don't see any worth in it as of now. Overall, it's not that cool. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you liked this video, consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can also consider becoming a member by clicking the join button. Also, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.